Hi, I'm Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. Come on, come with me. You know, this is going to be another video about Harry and possibly Megan. Um, there's just a lot of questions around that, and um, it, it feels like they just got pushed, 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 pushed out of the country by the uh, um, hungry media. So, um, I mean, first they left, they went to Canada, uh, couldn't get the protection and the uh, separateness that they wanted in Canada, moved on to California, and that seems to be so far the most secure place uh, for them. So, let's see what we can find out. So today I thought I'd use this Light Seer's Tarot uh, to kind of uh, dig into Harry and Meghan um, getting pushed, pushed, pushed back uh, from um, the United Kingdom just uh, because of privacy. I really think privacy was the key. So anyway, this Light Seer's Tarot is a beautiful deck that I've used a little bit and it comes in a nice box. It has a nice little saying in here. And it says, into the gray we follow like a thousand flickering stars, and there in a sunlit hollow we lose, we lose, and find what is ours. We loose. Ah, not lose, but we loose and find what is ours. And this is Dear Light and Shadow Seer, may this deck help you find what is yours. Ah, that's very nice. So that's Chris Ann. So, good message from Chris Ann. Uh, the cards are really amazing. The uh, instruction booklet is very useful. And it's got, uh, it's readable, which is uh, good. Sometimes they're not. But then the cards themselves are kind of modern. And uh, so it feels like it's the right deck for this couple. And I wasn't sure if we just do Harry, but then it seems like, you know, they are two people um, acting as one, one union. So let's try to put them all together uh, in one deck. So Harry and Megan, California. Uh, maybe we'll ask about the baby too. Um, the new baby that's coming so just it, it seems so sad it looks to be like it's a huge uh, misunderstanding with these folks and the firm and the way that operates and it's such a secretive um, unhealthy sort of a union that it seems to me that the uh, royal family has uh, with this firm attitude and that the firm has with this managing of their uh, personalities through leaking uh, little tidbits out into the public eye and I mean let's face it the modern version of this and who named it the firm that was Prince Philip and he's the modern he was the modern version of trying to cooperate with uh, you know electronic media um, which was television at the time and, and I guess radio a little bit before that with their father uh, Elizabeth's father so what is going on with all of this so Prince Harry and Meghan what can we find out about you? Um, what are the questions that we want to ask? Um, well, let's see this. Will Will uh, Harry and Meghan find some reconciliation uh, with the royal family in a public way? Will there be some sort of a public reconciliation with the royal family? Um, it could be that, uh, that that's just not something that's even important to this couple at this time. I would imagine, uh, you know, you want personal reconciliation, but uh, is public reconciliation as important? Um, if you want um, publicity, yeah, that seems pretty important, although they seem to have a publicity card of their own. I mean, they have their own value right now in that respect. So, you know, it seems like these cards really want to do something, so I'm just going to get right into it. So we're going to take six cards for Harry and Meghan. Um, will there be a public uh, reunification? And then I think we'll ask if there'll be a private. So we're going to do uh, six, uh, six cards first just to get to that question. Will there be a public reunification for Harry and Meghan with the royal family? Public reunification. So we have six cards here. Put these away. And save them for the last four cards of this uh, full Celtic cross. So it just seems such a shame that this all this disunity, uh, when when these people really 
um, it, 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 to the core of the actual royal family, Harry and his brother and his, his father, these people love each other. So what's the signifier? The signifier in this card, wow, it's interesting that I would say that they love each other. And then the signifier in this card is the Knight of Cups. And this knight shows up carrying, uh, you know, a, a bouquet of roses uh, and uh, taking his hat off in respect. And uh, his steed uh, waits a little impatiently uh, in the background. So um, the signifier of this card, I think this is a Harry, um, you know, ready to take his hat off and come back to the table and say, I'm sorry that this happened. But... I can't give up the stability that I've found. So that seems like the signifier, the signifier of this card. And if you notice here, there's even a sweet little um, note right here off to the side, a little secret message um, at, at the foot of this, what looks like to be a little picnic, a little a little celebration. So yeah, this is a fella who's, who's written a, a little love note to someone, he's brought flowers, he's taken his hand off in respect and um, so that's where we're at with that. That's where we're at with that. So this is the signifier. That feels like Harry sending a note of reconciliation to his sweetheart, which is the royal family in this regard. Um, the challenge to this, then, uh, is the Nine of Cups, you know. The Nine of Cups is, 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 is having all the emotion, the passion, the, um, the, the trophies uh, that you want. And uh, they're out for display, and uh, they're part of your treasure. And so that's what this is. The challenge to this is the treasure of all of that. And I want to leave that little message really showing right there. But the challenge to this is the trophy of all of that attention that they can gain on the world stage, both sides on the world stage. And the royal family's uh, firm uh, personality seems to be uh, masters, uh, or they think, at least they think they're masters of manipulating that media and. Um, and uh, the the value uh, for this couple is just their notoriety, uh, actually, at this point. So we have that now. So that's the challenge to to making this offer of a reconciliation is is the public um, uh, trophies that are uh, uh, at, at risk here. The basis of this reading then is the wheel of fortune, and uh, of course it is. The wheel of fortune just tells us that um, you know, depending on all the personalities that I think that are within that firm. Um, and then all, all of their wheels matching up at the right time. And how many wheels do we have here? We have one, two, three, four that are showing. So you could kind of think of those as the top four players, I guess, in that firm. So the Wheel of Fortune is at the base of this reading, getting this message out there. And it's a tiny little message. I mean, look at that. It's just a, it's a tiny little message waiting for someone to open. Uh, the recent past in this, in this um, situation is the Emperor. And um, the emperor is very much um, the authority uh, in charge of what's going to happen. So this is all lays at the feet, really, of the royal family. The royal family um, has the power to, to welcome um, um, him back in. Um, but he certainly has the power to say, it has to be on my terms. Um, and then the sky for this, oh, is the Three of Cups. Now, I like that. The Three of Cups are celebrations. And um, so what is the celebration? Could this celebration be the birth of the new baby? Could the celebration just be uh, uh, portending the, the, the potential celebration of these, uh, of these families getting back together? Don't know. We'll have to wait and see. Now, the um, likely outcome of the first part of this Celtic cross, then, is uh, the Eight of Pentacles. And the Eight of Pentacles is really, you know, working on your value, working on the problem, getting light into the situation. This looks like Megan to me. I would guess that this woman is truly in love with her uh, prince, but not because he's a prince. And uh, it looks like she's got all the ingredients stacked up in front of her and is looking for the solution. Now she's perfected her apprenticeship to a point, but this is a new kink uh, thrown into her, how to make family uh, whole again. And it hasn't been her, her strong suit in her own family so far. So that's um, the likely outcome. So this is Harry and Megan, I believe. I believe she's the planner and I believe he's the emotional uh, force behind so much of this. But let's see what the, um, what the, 
self self is for this situation of Harry and, and his family getting back together on a personal level with the uh, with his family not the royals not the firm but with his family but in a public way uh, let's see the self of that then is going to be the Hierophant and the Hierophant is, is clearly that there are rules that uh, that come down from on high from the royal side that have to be followed and uh, the um, but the self of this <clears throat> is Harry establishing his rules that have to be followed and that hasn't been where he's ever been uh, in this relationship with his family he's never been the one making the rules he's only been the one following the rules and it, this fellow looks very happy to have found these steps that lead to the light uh, as the Hierophant that's very interesting I think so the environment that this is in then is what let's take it from up here I want to be careful not to spill all these cards now, let's see that came out like that so really uh, this is the devil. The devil is in the details, and I think it's just as simple as that. As that. The devil uh, is all of the media uh, um, really stoking the flame of, of the passions of this whole situation. Uh, the devil is getting the details right, and, um, and the devil always seems like a welcome, uh, handsome, inviting uh, um, uh, situation. Um, but you have to look closely and determine what are the details. So that's the environment that Harry finding his Hierophant self is the details that are involved. And then the, um, the, life, the hopes and the fears of that for Harry, I think, are going to be, let's go right here for that. The hopes and the fears are the Four of Pentacles. And the Four of Pentacles, I think, takes us right back to Megan. And we show three Pentacles clearly here and one hidden and i just feel like that's the baby that hasn't made an appearance yet and i think that this is their family this is a uh, harry and megan and archie and this is the little one that's almost almost here and so i think the hopes and the fears might be that this little this little blessing that is produced from megan it can be the key to pulling the family back together in a in a in a public way that's interesting but let's see what the final outcome may be for this. I'm going to take it from the very top of the stack. And the final outcome is in the High Priestess. <clears throat> the High Priestess is the third step of the second uh, number that the Fool meets on their journey. Remember, the Fool is number zero. The Magician is number one. But the High Priestess is the all-knowing, uh, all-important uh, um, um, knowledge that the Fool needs on this journey. And so it looks to me like for the hopes uh, for the final outcome of this, it's going to be the high priestess really bringing in her inner strength to help uh, organize this reconciliation. And uh, this could even be uh, Megan. This could even be uh, Catherine. So that's how that looks to me. So. This is Mark, and this is My Journey Through Tarot. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it made you think a little bit. Uh, it certainly has been weighing on my mind, and I've, I've tried to hesitate. I've hesitated doing so many of these royal videos, but it, it's it's in the news, so that's why we have it. So I, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you come back tomorrow and join me for another trip. I'll be right here, and we'll figure out someplace else to go. So ciao for now.